Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Drive Her Business Brews. I am Kimberly, your social media manager. Because what are we doing here? We are managing our home businesses and our homes as one. Okay? So as you come on in, go ahead, hit the like button. And I have a unique story. The reason why I want to talk about the story, because I was in the gig economy. I started this YouTube channel while working in the gig economy. So this is going to really, really uh, help a lot of you all um, as it uh, correlates. Now, you're probably like, oh, I'm not in the gig economy. Oh, I don't have a side hustle. I don't have a side job. I don't have an extra job. Well, uh, I'm going to show you how this is going to affect you and how bad this is for everyone. I don't care what no one says. I understand both sides. I will be fair. I do understand both sides, but you must understand that with what the Department of Labor has just done, uh, this is going to change a lot of businesses. This is going to change how you pay. This is going to change the cost of service. This is going to raise inflation and so much more. And when people don't understand how this trickled up or trickled down poverty scenario works, um, it's going to be a wrap. Now, the irony is, if you all remember me back from the gig economy days, I when I think it was Prompt 22 or Prompt 20 that was going on in California, and I was highly against this, and I kept telling people, you don't want this. You do not want this, but they kept trying to get their employers, right? They kept trying to get your their employers. We want to. We need to be classified as employees. We want health insurance. We want this and we want that. And this is not fair. They're not paying us enough. And this is what I always say: Don't hate the player, hate the game. You know what I'm saying? And one thing gig workers did not realize: they were shooting themselves in the foot. The last thing you want to be now. I'm not. I look. I am not going to lie. These gig companies be be taking y'all to town. Okay. But this is why a gig should never, it's a gig. It's a gig. A gig is derived from some type of part-time employment. A gig is not something that is your end all be all. Who on earth is trying to retire from a gig job? Who has gotten a gig? When people reference a gig, a gig, it would be, oh, I got a gig. Oh, that means... You're going to be playing the guitar at the church, or I got this gig uh, that I'm doing on the weekends, or I got a gig. It is a gig. It's just a small, irrelevant, irrelevant fraction of something, right? It's not your main frame. The problem is, and this is this is the down, this, you know how you have all these corporate baddies and all these corporate folks online with their six-figure jobs moaning and groaning about corporate life, and they don't offer us coffee no more. You know, all that crap. I'm having to work 70 hours. Let me tell y'all something. A lot of y'all are not going to like this. Everything you do is a choice. Your degree, the job you got, the gigs you work, the businesses you work, it is a choice. And all of us do have a choice to walk away. Here's the problem. A lot of times you don't like the consequences of those choices. That's what you don't like. And until, and one of the things when I was coaching gig workers and I was like, hey, you better get out. I I am on. I think I'm probably one of the main people on here. I was literally. I had all my gig workers set up their gigs as businesses. I said, Hey, if you're driving for Uber and you're driving for Lyft and you're doing a little bit of roadie, you're doing some DoorDash, you're doing this, you're doing some medical currying, whatever the case may be, we're gonna lock that up in the LLC. I'm gonna show you how you're gonna flip this. But they didn't want to do that. They didn't want to account for their income. They didn't want to get a business checking account. They didn't want to get on ADP so that they could put themselves on payroll. They did not understand these metrics. And so a lot of times gig workers, um, they are, it's like stripper culture. They get addicted to the money far too quickly. And what happens is as fast as the money is coming in, it's going out and, it's, and they're not being held accountable for it. And they like that. That's what strip. That's why I, I was in Atlanta. And even when I used to drive for a lot of the strippers in Atlanta, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Them girls will be, I'm talking about, they will work a night. I'll pick them up at 5 a.m. or what have you. Some of them tried to get me as their private um, drivers. <clears throat> and they liked me because of my law enforcement background. And they knew I had that thing on me <laughs> because a lot of the men would stalk them and, and what have you. 
And um, I just have a soft spot in my heart for sex workers. You know, a lot of times sex workers um, like myself was sexually abused and, you know, what have you. And unfortunately, you know, it can it plays out in different ways. But a lot of times these young ladies and um, a lot of sex workers that would actually that were men as well um, in Atlanta. You know, you know how that was going. I don't have to tell you much about that. But nonetheless, sex work is huge in Atlanta. OK, um, and these girls will walk out with thousands of dollars in a night. That money is not going to last them three days because of the culture, how their money comes in. And it's, it's almost scary. And they can't keep it in a bank account long enough. Questions are going to be asked. There's no direct deposit. I was teaching my people this. But now you look where we're at. They're putting a the squeeze. So you're, it's getting squeezed at both ends. So corporate workers with six figure jobs or whatever, they're getting squeezed. And then you have the gig workers. You have the independent contractors are getting squeezed. I heard someone say like 80% or 90% of truck drivers are independent contractors. And I want to, when I bring up this article, this is how it's going to affect a lot of you all. Because now employers have a lot more leverage and they're going to try to, um, what's the word? <laughs> there's a, a phrase I used to say, but what basically what they're going to try to make you work for $2. Why? Because we're about to get a huge influx of people that's going to run to the market. This is all to inflate numbers. Y'all, the Biden administration, y'all's president, not my pre president, not the puppet in chief, not that, you know, weekend at Bernie's, um, you know, half dead, whatever that thing is sitting in the White House is, right? Not my president. Okay. Not my, not, not y'all's, y'all's president that got 90 gazillion votes. <laughs> Lies. Lies. <laughs> but now gig workers think there's a win. And a lot of times you all will chew off your hand, foot, leg, kneecap, and scalp yourself just to prove a point. And, and you don't, because you don't study economics, you don't know how money works. You don't understand how payroll taxes work. You don't understand how deep this is. And so now we have a bunch of people. Okay. Okay. Oh no, Kim. <laughs> Kim, Kim says, now we get at Bernie's utility put down the school. <laughs> Girl, I am 32. What are you talking about? 32 and turning 33 in May. Okay. What you talking about? Girl, I'm, 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 I'm young and vibrant out here. Wait, I think I'm really telling my age saying I'm 33. <laughs> You're usually supposed to go down about a good 20 years. <laughs> See, at my 33, like, oh, you old young buck. That's a young buck right there. 32. There you go. <laughs> Goodness, I did tell my age. Double, double time. Yeah, May, come May 3rd. As this lady said, if the, the Lord don't come and the creek don't rise, I will be 43. Praise the Lord. Yes, ma'am. But you have all these people out here. And let me go ahead and put this on the screen. You have these folks out here. Uh, is, is this where you said business to business will become um the no, B2Bs? Yeah. Oh my goodness. You remember that Sicily that's envision Li um, lives or envision lies. I always say lives. Um, is this where you said business to business will become the norm? Mm -hmm. I can't believe you remember that, but yes, because you're going to have to be set up as a business. And I told people this. I said, hey, you want to just get, ha have a couple, have yourself set up. You're going to have businesses saying, oh, we're not, we're not putting people on payroll. We don't, we don't, because people, first of all, employers don't want higher payroll taxes. Okay. They don't want that. And pe people don't understand this dynamic. So what does this mean? All right. Let me show y'all. Because this is going to blow your mind. And, 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 and mark my words. And I want you to mark this as March 1st. Happy March. I love spring. It's in the air. March 20th is, um, I'm, a, I'm a spring baby. So I love spring. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, she said, yes, that stuck with me. <laughs> so 
we I told you all Mar you know, and I don't like to utter certain words, and you know they always say March Madness because of the and we got we can't be speaking word cur curses, but um I'm gonna say that in a literal sense. I per now I can be wrong because they know how to move the pendulum, right? They know how to move that that little lever and artificially hold things back. But I personally think that we're going to see a massive part of the economic decline in March. And I've been saying that. I said spring is going to be, woo, okay, going into spring. And I, and I, and I won't even say spring because I think it's going to come before spring. Technically, we're still in the winter months. And I know because it feels like it's 32 degrees outside here in Georgia today of all days. And so, excuse me, um, the, what they're trying to set up, and let, let me just first tell you what they're trying to set up. The Biden administration and the Democrats, they will they know they have no chance in the world beating Donald Trump at the polls, right? So they're gonna create as much chaos as possible. And one of the things that Americans have become accustomed to is our lifestyles, whether you're a gig worker or a corporate worker, we just have a very accustomed lifestyle. And let me tell you, all those little TikToks and all these videos people been doing, they hear your cries and they don't care. They, this is why they've allowed um, a gazillion people to cross over the border, right? So because they're like, well, you don't want to do the job? No problem. We have AI. We can, and I kept telling you all how knowledge was going to increase and how people, you're going to have jobs. You're going to have, I'm talking about skilled jobs where people can learn this in a matter of weeks and in, in, in months. I already told you how college was a scam and how a lot of that stuff has been only stretched out over the course of four years because they want to get more money out of you. A lot of you all could get your four-year degree in a year, effortlessly. Effortlessly. Okay? So you have to understand that what they're, try what they're trying to do and what they have at their... I and I'm in AI. I'm in AI. I don't talk as much about it um, as I used to because a lot of people, it's just like, mm, if you didn't get on that wave, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I told you how uh, from its inception, how what it's going to be and it's decline. Certain aspects of it is going to decline. If I told you what they've created in AI just in the past 30 days, it will blow your mind. Did you not know open AI? Not only have they trademarked chat, chat GPT four, they've already trademarked chat GPT five. They trademarked, trademarked chat GPT six and they trademarked chat, chat GPT seven. I think six is dealing with AGI five is dealing with the video. I'm sorry. Text to video seven is dealing with the, I forget what the other thing that they have coming out, but it's so massive. And what they're doing, um, they, I think it's, uh, I forget the Indian, the East Indian dude's name that's currently over Microsoft, but it's Bill Gates, Microsoft and Sam Altman and what they've collaborated in doing and is open. And, you know, and this is why I think it's going to get shut down because it's saying that this software has godlike um, capabilities. And let me tell you, it's, I think it's already sentient, but we're not going to get into that conversation, but nonetheless, it's going to have to get taken down now. With that being stated, they are, and they already have autonomous or how you say, um, robonoids. They have the robonoids that are already in existence. And only thing they need is some people to sit there and help or adjust the robonoids, uh, robonoids, um, here and there for certain things. Do you not know how many employers will go ahead and spend, I don't know, $25,000 a pop for someone that can literally do something? I don't know. Uh, 24 seven and they just cycle them out. Y'all it's here. And this is why I'm like, Hey, get raw land. Hey, go ahead. Just go ahead and bite the bullet. Understand the trajectory of life, right? We're, there's no new normal. We're not going back. They're not, there's coming a day where you, they're not going to need Uber drivers. I personally believe Uber and a lot of these corporations, they're tired of y'all whining. So they're acting like they don't like this decision, but they've had enough years to get their stuff together. Okay. They got enough electrical vehicles that are nothing but trash anyways. And I'm telling you, if you don't want to sit in a car for $10 an hour while some robot drives it, because that's what it's going to be, an autonomous driver, and you just sit there and that's it for 10 bucks an hour and they're going to continue to make more profits and they're not going to have to do what people complaining. So let me get into this article because this is going to affect a lot of people. You have to understand, you have to understand certain, well, I will see, Hey, RC, Arf Chapman, um, in certain retrospects, I think artificial intelligence is here to stay in certain retrospects. Artificial intelligence is 
the traffic light. It's you going to the ATM. Those, it's it's here in so many. It's weaved in our culture so much that people don't even realize it's artificial intelligence. But I do think the more advanced uh, AGIs and stuff is going to have to get shut down. It's going to have to get shut down. Have to because it's it's terrible. Even I, it's terrifying. It's terrifying. I mean, but you know, God's in control. But th these things. I just said a ghost in the machine in the machine. Yo, um, I'm watching some of this stuff, and it's it's we as humans should not even and I this is why I was teaching about ethical AI because we shouldn't even want this. But they are so greedy and they want so many profits and they want all these different things. <clears throat> it's crazy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me um pull this up real quick. Um, hold on, present. Share screen. <clears throat> Excuse me. That should have brought my little water thingy over. Um. <clears throat> so let me blow this up. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. <clears throat> All right. So here it is. Hold on. Let me get my water because this got a piece of. Okay. All right. So what the um what the DOL uh new work reclassification rule could mean for businesses. Okay. What could it mean for businesses? Now this for my business owners, this is, and this just came out y'all on the 27th. Okay. Four days ago. So a final rule, right? L listen, released by the U S department of labor in early 2024, this year, the year of our Lord is expected to make it more difficult for companies to classify their workers as independent contractors. The rule will make it effective. Listen, y'all, it will take effect on March 11th, 2024. That's in what? A little over a week. This rescinds the 2021 rule, which made it easier to achieve independent contractor status. Now, let me tell you why they did that. Because at that time, they really did need independent contractors. And it was too far. It was too quick of a move. The Biden administration went in and they was like, look, you don't want to do this because we're still in the pandemic mode, right? That wasn't post-pandemic. It's, we still had a lot of lockdowns and things of that sort. So you needed delivery workers and what have you. This is where I think some deals were made. Okay. This is where I think some deals were made. And I'm going to show you why this matters. Mimi, you don't go sitting down with your, you with your nails. She done made me mad today. <clears throat> she made me mad earlier today, y'all. So. Under the rules, some employers may need to start classifying certain workers as employees rather than independent contractors. Uh, use of independent contractors is pre prevalent across various industries, okay, industry sectors, including trade, transportation, information technology, healthcare. We have a lot of independent contracting nurses, healthcare, and also with the gig economy. Y'all. I have taught on the gig economy for years in the gig economy. Oh my goodness gracious. The gig economy makes up I, at the time it was like over like 80 million jobs. Okay. 80 mi million jobs. So this takes, it takes up almost 50 to 60% of our overall employment in the, in the United States. There are a variety of differences in obligations as an employer regarding protection of workers, depending on, what, um, on whether an individual is classified as an employee or independent contractor. Now, let's look at this. When we see an employee at the top, okay, look at the spreadsheet, and an independent contractor, you can set your own rates and hours, okay, not eligible for unemployment benefits, must secure their own insurance for work injuries, such as occupational accident coverage. This is why I told my people, uh, get on ADP. Um, not covered by FMLA, may secure their own health insurance, responsible for paying self-employment, this is the 1099, taxes, may deduct business expenses, 
Um, but you're still more your sole proprietor, basically. Paid time off is not guaranteed, not covered by all discrimination laws, not covered by collective bargaining rights, usually at will arrangements, choose own projects, clients, and work schedule. So that is what um, independent contractors, gig workers tend to get, right? That's what they tend to get. Now, we, if you're an independent contractor, you know that and you set it up. This is the problem is a lot of people as independent contractors, or I would say as gig workers, a lot of time they come into the game and they come in with an employee mindset. Now, if you understand, like, you know, uh, Robert Kiyosaki has that, um, that financial quadrant, you know, you have employee, then you have the self-employed, um, the sole proprietor, then you have entrepreneur, and then you have investor, you have those four quadrants, right? But you could actually add some more into those, right? So, excuse me, you have your gig workers, because gig workers, a lot of people like to, um, act like gig workers are self-employed. The problem is gig workers, and hustlers or side hustlers are in their own category because it's a form of part-time work. It's it's like one day they're selling purses, another day they're selling oranges, another day they're selling, you know, um, cookies. There's no rhyme or reason. It's just, I'm going to get a little something because I do a lot of end or odd jobs. Now, let me give you an example of everyone who makes up the gig economy. That's your people on Fiverr. So those are your Fiverr workers, right? Um <clears throat> You got Fiverr, so you got up Upwork, you got Roadie, you got ta um um what is it um Task Rabbit, um you have Uber, you have Lyft, you have uh Grubhub, you have DoorDash, you have Uber Eats, you have so many different um um entities that make up the gig economy. Now you're if you do hair, if you're a hairdresser, there's a difference between being a hairdresser. And then being uh, uh, um, someone who owns a shop, right? Where you have it as a business style. When I worked with my hairdressers, I used to have a lot of them. The problem with my hairdressers, they a lot of time they act like stripper culture too. They like that quick money. They don't want the money. They don't want to pay taxes on the money. They don't want you, if you could pay cash, that's always best. Um, they have it going right into their Zelle account, those kind of different things. And see, y'all have to understand that you, the Gestapo came in. The Biden administration, no, y'all ain't been paying your taxes. The Gestapo, no, a lot of side money's been going on. This is why they want universal health, uh, I'm sorry, U, um, UBI, um, universal basic income. And this is why they want to go to a digital dollar. And this is one reason why they're trying to get a lot more people unemployed because of the, see, here's the one that attacked us for the election. If they can get you desperate enough, if they can give you get you crying enough, if they can make you desperate enough that you will take the UBI, that you'll go ahead and take that mark, you'll go ahead and just sign over your rights and do whatever, right? Under the guise of they're helping you. You have to understand this government is in the is in the is in the business of marketing off of chaos. Okay. All right. Marketing off of chaos. And so they create the chaos and then they sell you a solution. The solution is going to be UBI and the solution is going to be the digital dollar. And this is setting it up. And everyone, people on, and this is praising this like it's good. This is going to put millions upon millions of people out of work. And now it's going to be, so if you're looking for a job, what, what happens? Do you understand? Have you ever took a business class? Do you not understand supply and demand? That just doesn't go into commerce. Duh, supply and demand. So if I have as an employee, I'm an employer. I've, I've had people on staff throughout my years and I've always been in management positions. Let me tell you something. If I have a, a position and I, that position is paying $32 an hour and I'm dealing with a, a really strong talent a ta pool of talent of people, right? But that strong pool may only have 10 people that's applying for that job that's paying $32 an hour with full benefits, um, retirement, all the, cause we want the best of the best. That's what this, if you talk to any recruiter, they know about this, right? So now you're going to have a flood of people. Cause remember people in the gig economy ain't stupid. I mean, a lot of them, they have degrees. They have, I met lawyers that was doing Uber. Okay, it was really good, easy money, especially if you have a business. You want to get some, you want to get a few hundred. I can make a thousand dollars on a night night doing Uber, if I especially if I college football season. It was crazy the kind of money I could make just in some hours in Atlanta. Okay, and with an in, international airport. So the other thing is, you got a bunch of people who's gonna say, "Screw this." 
I'll just go back and get a job. Well, the talent pool expands. So I just went from having to interview 10 people to now probably getting the best of the best. And I'm going to have 13, th I'm sorry, 300 people applying. So the ball is in my court because if that's the case, that means there's a desperation in the mar marketplace, is it not? Out of that desperation, I can now drop that $32 an hour to maybe $27 an hour. And guess what? I don't have to give out such a Cadillac package. Why? Because I have a much bigger pool. The supply and the demand done shifted the dynamics. And this is why this sucks. And so why people are like, yeah, now Uber's going to have to give us insurance. Now, they ain't going to give it to you. And if they give it to you, I'm pro I promise you, you're going to be paying about 30% in it. Just because they give you health insurance don't mean it's going to be the best. Doesn't mean it's going to be the best. Now they're going to make you hourly workers. So imagine you using your car, working for Uber. And they say, yeah, we're just going to give you a flat rate of $17 an hour. You cannot deny rides. You do not have those op options. You have to pick up whatever we tell you to pick up. If we tell you to go pick up someone that's 20 minutes away, you're going to use your gas and your car. This, yo, this was a clown move. This was a clown move. And people who are so, they praise daddy government. Like corporations are just as corrupt and they're horrible. But y'all, like I said in the beginning, we have choices. We have choices. Now, let's look at the, um, you can see employees guaranteed under the Fair Labor Standards Act. That's a lie because a lot of you all with jobs are complaining, all right? Employer pays into unemployment fraud, in, unemployment fraud, um, insurance fund, I'm sorry, providing benefits of if an employee is laid off. Let me tell you something. I've been laid off and them, them benefits, last, I was forced to sign a contract. And in that contract, I had 12 weeks of benefits. 12 weeks of benefits. That's it. And it was either I had to sign. What is it? That, what's that thing that NDA they have you? I still got the paperwork. They have you sign your um the concession. When you, you know, who even been in here laid off? You know that paperwork they give you. And you can't come, you can't retaliate. You can't sue. You can't do that. But you got your, either you stay, like either you left and then you can fight it later on. Because my whole division was laid off. Or severance, severance packet. That's what was in the severance packet. Okay. So they're trapped because they, they have big corporations. They got lawyers. They got attorneys. It's, it's stacked against you. Don't try to make it seem like employers are held at this standard under daddy government. Because they're not. HR is one of the most disgusting divisions of any business. Don't trust anyone in HR. They're liars and they're corrupt. Period. We're here for you. No, they're not. No, they're not. They have a job to do. And I'm going to tell you, they're going to protect the corporate. That's what they're there for, to protect the corporation, to pr protect City Hall or to protect whatever business you're in. Understand that. Now, do some good come out of it? Yeah. But it's only when who who's going to outweigh what? OK, they they're in they're in place. Due to litigation, trying to avert litigation. I'm sorry for my HR workers in here. <laughs> Can you tell I don't like my sister's an HR manager? I don't like HR people. Okay. Um, employee pro employer provides insurance covering work related injuries. Man, they have you fired so quick. They'll try to have spies on you. They make if they see you getting out the car carrying a gallon of milk, you done. Okay. Eligible for un un unpaid leave. For qualified reasons, okay, that's FM, FMLA. Employer may um, offer group health insurance plans. Employer withholds and pay these taxes. That's what we call payroll taxes, but you're paying them. Don't be deceived. Employer may offer paid vacation, sick leave, and personal days. Yeah, but you never get to take them or you'll be fired. Um, there's so many other crap in here. So how could the DOL ruling impact employers? Let's go. Under the new rule, employers are directed um, to weigh six factors to determine whether, employ whether a worker is an employee or a contractor. Opportunity for profit or loss, depending on managerial skill. Investments by the worker and potential employer. So investments, we could, oh, I could go a lot. Let me hold off. 
degree of permanence of the work relationship, nature and degree of control, extent to which the work performed is integral part of the potential employee's business and worker skill and initiative. The Department of Labor has not determined whether any of the criteria outweighs others, right? Additional factors may also be considered if they are relevant to overall question of economic independence. Further, laws may exist at the state level impacting worker classification, such as California's Assembly Bill 5, um, one of the strictest tests in the nation. And we see that's going to um, hell in a handbasket. Not Note that the California legislation created various exemptions for um, specific professions and industries, although Assembly Bill 2257 and other legislation in um, professions like lawyers, doctors, accountants, and certain types of freelance writers and journalists from AB5's um, employee classification requirements. Now, Hollywood is out there, and a lot of those people are independent contractors. So they're, they're, you can't pick and choose. What uh, This was really to hone in on, right, to hone in on small businesses, gig businesses, and your maybe your local pub that may have independent contractors. They don't want to put people on payroll. All right, I'm gonna tell you right now. I, I don't put people on payroll. And when I put when I do put people on payroll, they're put on payroll as an independent contractor. I put them in my ADP system, and then ADP cuts the check. That's what I do. When I have guests come on and do all that stuff, it goes through unless I'm invoiced for like something small. But when I have long over 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 the period type of jobs that I have people do for me, they are going in and I'm cutting them an ADP check. Okay. So I don't want to have, if I got someone that's doing a job for six weeks, I don't want to go through that whole process. No one wants to do that. But they're trying to do this. Um, they're trying to have it like this for... Um, construction workers y'all y'all about to let me tell you something it's about to get disgusting out here okay and you don't think it's by chance now mind you a lot of people work under the table with these jobs right they get paid straight out cash whatever i promise you there's going to be certain rules and certain laws so that they get a lot of these illegals to have jobs this is why they're trying to get them temporary um part working permits and under and and let me tell you another thing let me tell you the the scammer behind this whole stupid thing with the department of labor and with the biden administration you have to understand anytime a president is trying to get reelected, you can't have bad numbers so you can't be in a deficit um you can't have a high unemployment you definitely don't want no recession or any kind of economic challenges, right? You don't want that. You don't want any civil unrest, none of that. So what they're going to try to do right now, one of the things, and this is my humble opinion, one of the things that they're going to try to do is they're going to try to clear the market. That's going to cause a lot of employment, but they're going to come in with it a salute with a solution. So we're going to see a lot of employment here soon. I'm telling March is going, and I already said there's going to be, a, we already know from layoffs.com that we're going to get a lot of layoffs in March. They're already on the books. They've already, because anytime a major corporation is going to do it, I want to say Google is doing it. Um, so many businesses, Meta is doing it. I mean, they, and then what they've been doing it is in 20 and 30,000 batches of people. That's how they're doing it. Okay. And so they're going to make the market in a way where, okay, you get a flood of people that's unemployed. And mind you, they need you all to go back to work. People still are not going back to work. Even though employees are like, we're trying to hire people. They're not. So they're they're trying to get you in duress. Um, even with the Federal Reserve, remember the the the, the chairman of the fair, I'm sorry, yeah, chairman, um, Jerome Powell, he said, Lily said we need more people unemployed. This is how they want to taper. The, um, supposedly, I, um, he had just said. I can't remember the clip, but he had just said that they're anticipating that they're going to go back up on interest rates. This is why there was a huge dip, I think, a week or two ago in the stock market. Okay. Right. <laughs> uh, our Chapman says it's about to get critical in these streets. Very much so. 
This is why I had you, I have you all cash stacking. This is why I was like, hey, March, what are we doing? No spend March, right? We are not spending if we don't have to. Outside of like educational purposes, your business, you know, your home needs, but cut your expenses where you can. Do what you do, do what you must to do that because they are trying to, you have to, you ever hear those reports when they're saying, well, there's still this much um, liquidity in the market. You, this sounds so sick, but this is what they're doing. They are trying to drain your savings accounts as much as possible. This is why I'm, I've been telling people, hey, yeah, it is a risk keeping money at home, but your money is better in your hand and in a system at your house in a safe than in the banks. Why? Because if you have tons of money sitting in the bank, right, especially when it comes to savings and it's not being cycled like a positive cash flow, it's losing more of its value. So if you have $25,000 in the bank right now, by the end of the year, you can lose up to 3% of 25,000. Now, do you, do you want to pay? Do you want to give the market for some money you're not using 3% of your hard earned money? You don't want to do that. So what you want to do, you want to lock it up. How are we locking it up? Land banks, right? We're doing the tax deeds. We're doing the tax deeds. I'd rather lock my money up in some hard assets than then having it sitting in a bank. And I always, one of the things I, you know, I'm an economic enthusiast. One of the things I always tell people is like, listen, inflation is nothing more than a tax. That's what it is. The people that make the most money are businesses, these corporations and the U S government. And we see what's going on with the treasury bonds and how that's about to kick them in the butt as well. Okay. This is, this is corruption at an all time high. And the only, and they are rather, and you have to understand if you're desperate, yeah, you might not get that job for $23 an hour, but you might be able to get the one for 17 an hour. And the U S government needs more people on payroll taxes. That's what they need. Y'all. They need you to buy in, pay into these stupid wars. They need you to pay into social security, which is dead on arrival. Anyways, we will never, us, our, my generation, we're not going to see social security. I should not have to pay into it. It's stupid. It is criminal. It was never payroll tax, income tax, the social security, the Medicaid. That was never supposed to be part of our system. That was a temporary thing that was um, ushered in through, what is it? Uh, what's his name? Um, RD, what's his name? Um, J, um, RDR. What's it? RJ, RJ. What's his name, y'all? Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm talking too fast. <laughs> right? And just after L. L, no, not not L, it wasn't uh uh it wasn't LB um it wasn't Lyndon um Johnson Teddy 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 yes thank you okay just after the um World War Two FDR FDR okay we was not supposed to be on this this is this is one of the biggest scams of America but they have enough money to hire six what. Um, how, how much 67,000, 87,000 IRS agents that's going to be coming after people that's going to be coming after businesses. And this is why I say y'all less can very well be more. And this is why I'm everything I'm doing, especially in this year. And I'm teaching. Okay. One of them dead presidents. <laughs> he did his bidding. Trust me. LBJ did his bidding too. I don't like him. He's a racist. All right. Um, he's the one that's, and I quote, um, we'll have those Negroes voting Democrat forever. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. And he wasn't lying. He put in, and Negroes are still champion for the Democrats, but I digress. Okay. <laughs> so here it is. They need people to pay into these payroll taxes. Because they know you're not going to do it on you. We should be, I should be able, and this is how taxes used to be. You paid it on your own. This is what I made. This is what I did. Why is it that I got to take, you take my money first? Nah, I don't like that. I don't like that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. But this is why, even though we don't like it, you're going to have to learn accountability. You're going to have to master using a ledger. You got, I, what have I been talking about? What is it that me and Tiffany are teaching on? And for some of you, I was in the um, class we had. I've been putting up some of the snippets of our, um, that was with the BBBS though. But um, shout out to you all that's coming out on the 24th. Um, I do have some seats left with that. The price has went up. 
Uh, but I assure you, you will be surprised. Everything that you get, and I strongly suggest you use one of my coupons. Check your emails. I send out coupons every week. Okay, check your emails. You're more than welcome to use them. So sometimes it's 20%, 25, 30, sometimes 50. It is what it is. Don't get mad because oh, I wish I could have used it. Calm down. Calm down. Okay. <laughs> um, and he's celeb- look, they've been quiet this year on them on these refunds. They ain't been getting them refunds like before. And I had told people, y'all can say goodbye to refunds. And the IRS is still um, on a hunt by them. them yeah, with the PPPs. Let me tell you. they. I said, I said, someone, any of us that work in government, one thing I'm going to tell you, I'm telling you, government got time. Government is like, think of the United States Postal Service. They got time. They are not pressed. They're not pressed. Okay. It's the same thing every day. They will watch, they will sit there and watch you commit crimes. They will watch you like they will watch you perjure yourself. Okay. You did the referral, um, Sharon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'll be trying to tell folks. I give out too much for people to be. I don't want to hear no one complain about my prices. And the only reason why the price is a little bit higher is because Tiffany is doing the legwork. I'm hosting and I'm doing the material. We're giving you all packets, everything. You're going to be surprised how this comes out. So if y'all need some estate planning, you need to understand trust wills in the state. We're going to have all those for you. We're going to have the documents for you. I'm even creating some GPTs. We're going to have all, all those things are literally will be filling the blanks for you. And we're handing that out to everyone that takes the class. Okay. It's going to be amazing. We want you to protect your land. We want you to protect your understanding mineral rights, understanding land rights, understanding timber rights, understanding water rights, understanding how, you, come on, y'all, you don't want to be Wendy Williams sitting up with your money locked up in probate right now because you didn't do the right thing. Your own children, your own child can't even have access to the money and you got some random judge, some random person allowing her donors to have conservatorship over your estate. Come on. How many of you all have had a dead parent or whatever and their stuff got locked up in probate? Because why? For whatever reason, it is just an oxymoron on the blacks to set things in, in, in order. I don't want them white folks in my business. You better go down and get your, get, get, get your law firm. Get you an attorney. You only got to pay one time to set up the trust. You can always amend aspects of the trust. Um, me and Tiffany, we have a class coming out and that's going to be later. I think we're doing that in the summer and helping spe specifically women of color that are business women, right? That are single. Um, we, we're trying to see if we're going to do one for married women too, but go ahead and setting up your trust, setting up things for prenup, right? Um, men, you all need to have prenup as well. I don't know why it's such a bad, everyone at like, oh, you must not trust me. People change. What you mean? People change. I have what I have. You have what you have. We can get what we have collectively and that can have a whole nother trust, but don't be stupid. We have to use wisdom people. We're not, everyone wants, oh, I just know this person would never such as such. All right. We, we're getting documents over here. Okay. We're getting documents over here. All right. So that's just my suggestion. Even if you're married, I think you should set up um, two different trusts as well and then have a primary one. This is so that you have layers of protection. It's not because someone's going to cheat or something, but it's just to have layers of protection if someone want to act up. How many women? You got this woman, Risa Tisa, on the internet showing just how stupid she is. I cannot, I, that story it irritates me. How everyone's talking about this. Like, I, I don't know why that thing, that storyline makes me so mad. And everyone is into, her stupidity is everyone's in, in, entertainment. How much, how many red flags do you need to know that someone's lying. But again, when someone's kitty cat gets to itching and they don't want to believe something, this is what the Bible calls silly women. But this is why we have to have these uncomfortable and up upfront talks now. This is why our young girls are going into situations like when they hate the girls are handing over their checks. The men are clearly ain't going to a job. I had I dated a dude just some years back. That guy had about a good three weeks with me, and I, I caught him in so many lies, and he, he calling me a little too much. I'm like, hey, are you at work? Oh, yeah, I took today off. Oh, okay, because he, he's supposed to be a supervisor. He called me again. Now I'm working, and I was in Atlanta getting my money. I was always working. 
All right. I'm a, I'm I'm run, meeting with clients, doing a little bit of Uber on the side, doing a little bit of roadie, making my ebooks. I'm in the field and I'm working. You calling me too much. You ain't got no job. Okay. You lying. And he was. He was doing some tip. Yeah, three weeks. Now I'm I want my, my three weeks back. Ooh. I'm telling you, ask them questions. I, I calculate them. Right. <laughs> Jermaine, daytime ninjas. Let me tell you something. His daytime's a little too open. He, oh, you want to go out for brunch? You're supposed to be at work. I don't know. No. Why? 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 I go to brunch with my girlfriends. This is Tuesday. Why are you not at work? You done did this three times this week. No. No, I'm sorry. I'm I'm good. Cause my daddy at work. And if he wasn't at work, he found something to do. Okay. He 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 cutting the yard. He doing something. Girl, watch out for them daytime ninjas. Unless they got a night job and you got to look at them side eye too. Okay. I'm just saying. Let me no, I want my three weeks back. I man, he was what's them? I don't want to say the word, but they call them F boys. Negro, you well, I think at the time I was like 37. He 30. He, I think I had about, I think I was two years older than him or something like that. Stacy, it's Girl Tuesday. Tuesday. Mm-mm. You should be working two jobs on a Tuesday. Mm-mm. So let's finish this, right? <laughs> I'm mad about them three weeks. He had to audacity try to call, get back with me. Mm-mm. So, um, workers' compensation plans. Where was we at? Oh, three actions for employers to protect their businesses, right? Become familiar with the state-specific classification laws. They know you're not going to do that. Determine potential financial implications, all right? And consider impact of insurance. This is this is it right here. Consider impacts on insurance programs. And that's that means employment insurance, y'all, not health insurance. Um, determine new rule changes, economic insurance program. They want you paying into this system. They want you. They want more people paying into the system. They do not have enough people paying into the system. Y'all have to understand. A lot of this money was coming from the baby boomer generation. The baby boomer generation came out, and you had all these people that went into the factories. They went into the military. You can't even get people to sign up for the military right now, and you can't get people to work these jobs. You got a bunch of kids who want to be YouTubers and 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 Twitch streamers. Okay. Hey, Thomasina. <laughs> Welcome, darling. She says, first, let me put it on the screen. First time here. That's what's up. <laughs> uh, Kimmy, at what point in the courts, um, I was chosen, at one point in the courts, I was chosen to fill in provisionally as a clerk. Oh, a court, um, court clerk. It was kept quiet and we had Luther Vandross as a client who had a guardian and was not a family member. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Now, sometimes a, a guardian, um, someone that's given um, guardianship is because they don't even trust their own family or they've been coerced. Right. Or documents have been falsified. Mm -mm. No, you this is why you know how remember when Tiffany y'all in class, she was talking about the, the, the business of family. We don't understand the business of family. Why you think? OK, you ever see these rich folks, right? And, um, and excuse me how I say this. I'm not trying to be mean. But you notice, you don't know this person got all this money, but they spouse ain't, ain't a looker. These are not beautiful people. Now, they have access to other beautiful people. They have, and I'm, I'm not talking about celebrities. That's different. They have access to people. They have their money grants them access to a, a class of people, a, a, a dynamic that most of us probably wouldn't have. But the smart ones, they wife looking a little fugly. Hubby might be a little fugly. Why? Because they they get married out of the pedigree. See, they look at your pedigree, just like the royals. We don't do that, right? It's oh, I gotta get me a baddie, or he gotta be six four girl. If, if I, I don't care, is he five two and can buy, build me a she shed? I'm good. Is he gonna go out there in my chicken coop and get them snakes? Because I'm not sticking my hand in no in, in in no coop trying to get in there some snake, but I don't want it. Okay. We're not practical in our desires because we have given into a falsehood of a man or a woman. 
right? Oh no, she can't like when these these um these guys come out here and you know they've been them, them red pill, which I don't mind the red, red pill is funny to me, but um these whole mansplaining channels or these guys, yeah, she got to do this, she can't have a gut, whatever. I ain't never had no man, not one except my gut. The gut's here, it's here. The food paw is here. Take it or leave it. Okay, take it or leave it. Leave it. All right. There's, there's, look, us normal folks around here, <laughs> we're not caught up in that stuff. People are making demands that they can't even fulfill themselves. All right. They can't do it. But when you look at these people in their pedigree, they lock up their pedigree. They don't even, they, man, sometimes they're the, the husband to have a whole nother family or have a whole nother house or whatever. They ain't getting no divorce. Why? Because of the pedigree. Their family got with this family and they're locking up their resources. Okay? They're locking up their resources for generations. Okay? We ain't gonna allow a little discord to get in the way. My feelings are hurt. He don't give me no time. Girl, shut, sit down sit down. All right. But our society, how it's been groomed, just like the workforce right now, how the workforce has been groomed. This is why a lot of you are, and I'm, you're going to wa watch, watch how many people get kicked off of you Uber's platform. Watch how many people get kicked off or guess what? Uber's going to make it now. Okay. You could be on a platform as an independent contractor, but guess what? You only can do 15 hours a week. People are going to get kicked off. People are not, you're not going to be allowed to work so many hours. See, with Uber, the, you, could, you could do 60, 80 hours. You could do that. You could hustle on them platforms. But guess what? They're going to say, mm, we got to, because of the new law and we don't want to pay these payroll taxes, we'll allow you to do 17. 17 hours on the platform and then you're shut down. But y'all allow these YouTubers and these people to try to champion for you who are these labor un unions right to go we need equality we need this, 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 this. Mm -hmm. yeah it's not good this is not gonna this is bad this is bad okay come on let me put that chopped overnight it's a wrap march 11 watch what and i and now look look listen now i think the door dashes and the Ubers, I think they wanted this. And I, uh, the Kara, what's his name? Kara Daras, um, Darasaki or Darasari, um, the CEO of Uber. I remember he came out, he didn't want this. Um, um, President Trump didn't even want this. President Trump was like, look, he's a businessman. He's like, this is not going to work. And who is going to hurt? It's going to, the corporation is going to always come out on top. And now they're going to say, okay, fine, since you do this, since you, you've done this, we're going to go ahead and get buy up all them Hertz vehicles that are electric that nobody want. And we're going to put that in our inventory and then we're going to have people come in. So you're going to have to be like the taxi drivers. You're going to go have to go pick up a car and then you're going to do. Why would you do that? This is not going to be good, but you have to understand we're going to have a market of desperate people. So there's going to be someone willing to do these jobs. They're going to be willing to do it at half the rate, y'all. What are you, are you a hairdresser? What are you going to do? What are you going to do if you own a shop and they're like, well, you got to pay them such and such. And, and they, you're like, wait, they're paying booth rent. What are you talking about? But they're trying. And they, now this is where it's going to change on the state level. So y'all need to be mindful of that. All right. This is where some of the shifts can, um, the, the different factors, I believe is going to be determined on a state level. But as far as the Department of Labor, oh yeah, they come, they're coming in. And what they're going to do is just find, if you don't make the changes, they're going to find the corporations or find the small businesses that are paying people like this. This is going to affect um, servers. I'm going to tell you right now, I do not like servers that are on payroll. I don't, I don't, I don't. I need you to tap dance. I ain't even going to lie. If I And I'm one of those people, I always tip well over 20%, anywhere between 20 and 30%, sometimes 50%. I'm the kind of person when I go out, I like, I like the experience. I like the experience. Heck, I went, went, took myself out for lunch the other day and that was about, that was just $50 for my meal in itself. I am one of those people. I want to know what's on your, what's the, what's the chef's cut this today? What's the, what's on the menu? What's the vegetable of the day? What's the catch of the day? And when I was drinking, I don't drink no more, but when I was drinking, you better know the wine list too. Don't worry. And I ain't one of those sending stuff back. I don't act like that. I don't do none of that. But I like a good ambience. I like a good setting. I like a well-educated um, 
um, server. I want that. I want my lint. I want proper linen at my table. I want it wiped off every, if you see a mess in these, I like being catered like that. It's about the experience. I'm going to tell you something. And if you've been in Atlanta, I reason, and please don't get mad at me about this, but a lot of times I didn't go to the black establishments. You want to know why? A lot of times those people, not only are they on payroll, so they get paid hourly. Um, the gratuity is built into the check. I remember me and a bunch of my friends went out and they how the gratuity is higher when you have a group, right? When you have a group, what was so sad is they built the gratuity in. Now, usually I'll go ahead. So everyone with a separate check, everyone had to pay 20, um, 20 something percent. It was like 25 percent or whatever of the check. And it was a group of five, y'all. And this is something that goes on at a lot of these establishments, the black ones in Atlanta, because people now our culture is believe our culture usually don't tip. And I have to admit in Atlanta, it's a catch 22, but I found black people do tip. All right. And those are the people that are fre frequent frequencing a lot of these places. Now you get the ratchet Enas that come in and they won't do it. But for the most part, blacks do tip and tip pretty well. Okay. And I've been in that industry and helped out my friend's restaurant, so their juice bars and stuff like that. You'll be surprised, okay? So I can't say that is a, a real big thing, but for nonetheless, you will go to these establishments, and when you go to these establishments, they're bill, billing, billing in the gratuity, and they like quadruple tip. And it's like, you know what? Well, fine, I'm gonna give you that. I was gonna, I would have gave you a little bit more, but it's a, it's a cash grab. Not um right, Stacy. They did tw over twenty percent per per person. And mind you, did the group under the group rate? So even so, there was an, an another fee that was added. So honestly, I paid about thirty percent in gratuity. And this is what we don't like. So when they like, oh, well, why you go? I would go. You know, I'm going to Roomies. I would go to um Cafe Two Four Six down downtown Decatur. Like my my little spots. Oh, you always going in with the white folks. Let me tell you something. I don't, I don't need this whole itemized, um, a la carte type of, I don't need that crap. All right. I got money. I know what I want. I'm going to pay it. I don't need all this. And I got to have all these stupid breakdowns because you trying to penny pinch and make your dollars. And that money was even, wasn't even going fully to the, um, the, um, how the, some of these restaurants do it. They wasn't if they would they would take about 50% of their tips anyways because they're on payroll. And so the service goes down. They don't have their one thing about servicing the, the incentive is not there when you're putting them on payroll like that. Now, this is my opinion. I could be wrong. Other cultures, I think in Italy or certain places, is an insult to like tip, right? You don't tip. Shout out to my folks, us, us passport folks, right? Okay, us world travelers. Right. Some places they don't want you to tip, but they see an American come through. They want them American dollars. So don't believe that. <laughs> don't believe it. OK. So now we see where my hair top. Oh, this is really like aggravating. Um, now we see how the gig economy and how what the department, the rulings of the Department of. Um, that, right, Stacy said, yeah, in Germany, is a, uh, there's no tipping in places. Yep. We see how the gig economy is going to affect us regular degular workers and how it's going to saturate the market because now you're going to have a bunch of people who are going to say, forget it, I'm just going to go back into the market, which is now going to drive down any employer having to pay certain costs because of supply and demand. It's going to make the employment pool go up massively. OK, and the options there and employers already know that because let's just be honest. And one thing I was I, I, I don't care what position you're in, in the mo most in most places, you're disposable. You're not. Most of us are not in specialized. You're, you're not. You're not special. I don't think you're special. Don't. You die today. So I want to be at your desk tomorrow. OK. And that's just a reality. I don't that doesn't even bother me at all. But again. This is why we're cash stuffing. This is why we're saving cash. This is why we have businesses. If you're in the gig economy, now I don't help in this area no more. And I took down them videos. But I strongly suggest that you become a B2B 
you need to become and make sure you create an entity outside of yourself and make sure that your entity is paying you. Hence, if you need if you need payroll service, I got you. Hold on. Hold on. Right here on my website. You go to my website and here's a payroll service. I'm um, I've partnered with I've been partnered for years with ADP. Okay? You can get ADP and they, I, I even have my own page. If you click in there, you'll see it. Matter of fact, let me just pull it up real quick. Uh, present, stop, share screen, share screen. Here we go. Welcome CEO drive her members and affiliates. Okay. So, um, I have a um I, I have a manager that I work with at ADP. Her name is Bailey. Um, some of y'all are familiar with Macy. Macy went to a different position, so now I'm working with Bailey, and um, she can help you out. But you are gonna I'm look. I don't care if you just pay yourself two dollars once a month. Pay yourself. Put yourself on payroll. Now, if you know, you know. That's all I'm gonna say. That's that's all I'm gonna say. If you know, you know. And some of y'all wink, wink. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Come on. You're just simple. Man, it's Ravi. Yo, Ravi. So Ravi, it was Ravi and Kev. And Ravi was, Ravi was the last um, guy in last night's class when we did the Christian Homepreneur. OMG. And I'm so glad he went because then we was able to explore some other stuff. And it just gave us ladies get so happy when it's a dude. We're like, we got some men's and owls. But you're just a, um, you're just a re replaceable clog. The machine will keep moving without you. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Y'all shout out Ravi. <laughs> yes. Real estate man. Yup. We got a man, y'all. We had a good time last night. Um, our class, we had the um, Christian um, homepreneur. It was so much fun. Um, they end up kidnapping me for four hours. I was like, oh, this is going to be an easy class. I'm going to put out what I need to. We'll do the practicals. Lies. Now, that was really not supposed to be a long class. <laughs> right. We did. We we had we had a blast. So where we at? Oh, we're right at 60 minutes. Um, this is going to be, make a real big difference. You all, um, let me get this off screen. This is going to make a real big difference, um, with the gig economy and what is, what has been determined and go effect is going to be fully effective March 11th, uh, of this year, which is in just a week and almost two weeks, not even two weeks. Um, it's, it's going to make a real big difference. And you want to be prepared. And you have to understand a lot of corporations are going to take advantage of a lot of the noise that's going to be made. We're going to have a lot of noise um, in these streets. And what they're going to do is they are going to hit at the same time, hoping that they don't end up on the headlines. That's basically what it is. But that that's my prediction for March. But we cool common collective, right? Because we already know what's going down. We already know where this is going. We already know the strategy. We already know the plays that are being made. Okay. Um, like I say, hold your mule, hold your horses, y'all. We're going to come out on top on this. Um, I really think we can really eat up really good, um, after April, you know, even with the buying of properties, um, these tax deeds and everything that we're doing, it's going to be massive. Oh, it's a rainy day here in Georgia. It's cold and rainy and it's the Sabbath and I just want to sleep. <laughs> Uh, let me go through these comments. <clears throat> um, <laughs> the, the, the service is better than Excel. Taking your order. Right. Oh, Tiffany was in the building, y'all. She probably don't dip back out. It's t Legacy is a lifestyle. Y'all seen the snippets? I put a, a few snippets up of her. I'm gonna do some more snippets up into our um our class, our class. That, oh, this, she don't text me. What's she texting me for? Let me see. Let's look down. Ah. <laughs> so um, that's that, y'all. I think I'm gonna let you go. I don't want to keep you. Happy Sabbath. Um. 
just, you know, with your own jobs, make sure you're doing, keep up with your resumes, um, have some things and in, in, just in play, have you some dry powder, just be ready, y'all. I'm not trying to um, speak ill of anyone or I'm not even wishing bad. I'm. We just know the reality. I know the reality just in the position that I'm in, right? Um, when God said, hey, you're going to have to really put on this thousand year mindset, um, change your lifestyle in certain ways and do things. No problem. No problem. We're talking about possibly Great Depression times coming up here. Now, I, I personally believe and we'll see that Trump going to get reinstated. Um, I don't know how. I still don't think we'll have an election. If we do, I would be very surprised. But um, but it's going to be a slow crawl, y'all. A lot is going to have to get dismantled and destroyed because the system is horrible. You know, uh, they're talking about, of course, the quantum financial system coming in, right? The QFS. Uh the whole, the the dollar, right? USD. I think USD is going to get restrengthened. I do think the IRS as well as the Federal Reserve will get taken down. But let me tell you something. Um, and FYI, a Rothschild just died. Let me, and let me tell you, let me just speak a little bit on that. Let me put this back on the stage, right? Let me go here real quick. Because y'all got it, y'all, while things are going on, you got to see what else is um, playing in the background. And remember the Roth trial, um, you don't think, and when we say Roth IRA, you don't think that's connected, but okay. Roth child de death, right? Um, not, he died, that was in 22, the one that just died, this one. This evil, you know, spawn of Satan you know, probably come from the line of Cain or something. I don't Let me just shut up. This evil devil, right? This ugly, you know, okay, Kim, that's why I'm getting locked up with words. I got to watch my mouth. Um, Come up, Miss Bella, what you know about Miss Sarah Jashara? This Miss, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call Miss Bella Miss Body. Because I'd be like, every time she come up on my screen, I'd be like, okay, Body. You know, girl, I used to have a shape like you, honey. I got some rolls these days. I'm going to get it down. I'm, I'm trying to drop about 50 by my birthday. But Ms. I'm going to say Miss Betty, Miss Bella got by every time. I'd be like, look at Miss Body. Um, what you know about that, Nisara Jashara, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. I can't talk like that on here because every time I used to, I used to get banned on YouTube. <laughs> you got some rolls? Nah, girl. I got it. I got it. I, my rolls are glazed. <laughs> <laughs> and ham juice on these gloves on these rolls, girl. I gotta get them down. Um, but yes, ma'am, Nasara. Now, don't think it's by chance, right? Um, it's deep. Yeah, I'm always banned on Twitter. <laughs> girl, I took down my whole my whole Instagram, my one of my older um Instagrams. I didn't care. I was like, whatever. Y'all ain't paying none of my bills. Uh, Jacob Rothschild, the financer from the family banking dynasty, dies at 87. Okay, now we just got, uh, what's, his, what's that other? Oh, George Soros. But Rothschild began his career at, uh, was it, N.M. Rothschild and Sons in 1963 before he broke away from the family bank to start businesses and charities. Lies. Lies. Let me tell y'all something. These are the people who run. These are the people. Let me show you something. Let me show you how powerful he is. Let me just show you something. Right? Jacob Rothschild point at Pope. <laughs> Let me see. They kiss the Pope kisses his ring. Where's that picture? Where the Pope, the Pope bows to Rothschild. It's gotta come up. Look at this. Look at this. Everyone kisses the Pope's ring. This is. The Pope and these uh, and this and they say in the Holocaust, but this is the lineage, all right. The, and I ain't gonna say the word, but you know the word of a certain group of people. Certain group of people. Rothschilds is a Jewish name, mm -hmm. and 
the Pope is bound to them. And this, there's more times this, is, this has happened. Now you notice kiss didn't Kissinger just die. We also just had, um, what's his name? Um, Warren Buffett's bestie, uh, Kruger. What's his name? What's his name? Y'all Mr. Burns. Right. Uh, Oh, it's funny. You just said that the billionaires are liquidating po um, portfolios. And I look, let me, I've been telling them this on this channel and they don't listen to me. I keep telling them, look, y'all, you got to have some cash. Please have some cash. Please have some land. Have your stuff locked up. They're liquidating their portfolios. Now, personally, I think the white hats are on their butt and they're about to lose, all, lose it all because of the operations that Trump is doing in the background. But for those that know, no. And no one, Munger, Munger, thank you, Sharon. Munger just died. Munger. These are the top billionaires of the world. They're all dying. Charlie Munger. Let me put that on the screen. Charlie Munger, he just died. You don't think this is by, you don't think this is a coincidence? All these billionaires. If I went in chat GPT, I'm gonna like, list all the billionaires that have died just in 2024. We ain't even gonna talk about the ones that's getting X'd, like the ones. Who, oh, let's not talk about Bitcoin. How many of y'all are falling for this pump? Let me tell you something. And I, a lot of y'all gonna get pissed off at me, and I don't care. Oh, come on, come on, Brandon. Brandon coming through with the knowledge. Jacob was one, was the one who started Israel and run banks. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yep. And they sacrifice each other too all the time. All the time. His brother um last year, Evelyn, died. But what was the thing I just said, y'all? Um what was it? The Bitcoin. Let's look at bit. Let me show y'all something. Let me show you how you're getting set up because you Bitcoin bro bros get mad at me. Uh, Bitcoin. And so it's back at 60. And I'm going to tell you, here it is. Um, Bitcoin and, um, price today. This is where it's at, y'all. Now, let me tell you something. You remember when Jamie Dimon just came out and was like, oh, we're going to do it as an ETF and we're going to do this. And do, do, do. Let me tell you, they're making you run your money. I'm going to tell you right now, it is the U.S. government, I think, the CIA created Bitcoin. The Bitcoin was to get you all acclimated to digital dollars. A lot of you now, you know, I'm an XRP, XLM and XDC chick, period. I'm not changing my stance. OK, I'm not changing that. I'm with Ripple. OK. I've been saying this for years that Bitcoin is a Trojan horse. Now, I know a lot of y'all, you like, I got Bitcoin. The El Salvadorian president, he's on TV talking about Bitcoin. Let me tell you something. Bitcoin, and I don't care how much y'all try to justify it, it's, it's the same imaginary money as the U.S. dollar that's backed by nothing. But Trump said, we got the gold. And I'm telling you right now, come on, let me put down the screen. XRP for life. Shout it. All right. Right. They're pumping it. They are pump. Let's look at this. They're pumping it. So it went from this was is that one month ago? Now at the high it's been for today, 62,600, 62,000. That's for one coin, y'all. USD, of course. All right. Let's look at this for year to date. So they're not pumping it. They're not pumping it, huh? Remember, it had dropped down almost down to 16,000. This is at 20. Let's see, the five year. So, this right here, this is 2019. We got it at 3,900. How in the hell is something this fake? Today's at 62. It's not even backed by gold. There's no, there's no substance to it. There's nothing. Y'all, and, and, and what's so sad is I'm just gonna give me a little piece of Bitcoin. You won't even you won't even go and get you a tax deed for a few hundred dollars or get you a trade or learn some kind of get some kind of intellectual properties, which shout out to y'all that's in my print the publish class on Sunday. That's gonna be a long class, but we're gonna get y'all published. All right. You all are sit here. I'm going to go ahead and get this NFT. Y'all ain't talking about that no more. And people ain't doing no Forex no more, huh? 
But they're gonna let me wish where I seen it. She just she just wrote it. She says, Yep, Kim, the ETF at 10, um, 10, um, 10 billion. And then she said it right here. They're gonna, I'm saying gonna, they're gonna rug pull it. This is a rug pull. It, 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 it angers me because people are getting excited. I'm like, you're getting you're getting conned because they know the you don't want to do the work. You all, this is nothing more. Then and y'all know I'm anti stock market, but this is nothing more than you going down and playing a lucky seven on them scratch offs. They're trying to rob you. They know um, FOMO, fear of missing out. They know you're about to do this. Or FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So as more as so as a lot of you all, they I'm telling you, the CIA created this. I don't care what you say. This whole um, what's his name, Neurosar, um serotonin or whatever the this mystery japanese dude that created bitcoin and he now he came back on the scene it's a trojan horse and it's a trojan horse to take all the liquidity out the market get you hyped up they're gonna get you because it converts to usd and then they're gonna sell it on the back end they pumping it right to because they've been they've been on this stock do you not know how much the u.s government own in bitcoin and they're going to be the main ones to sell it up on you. And you're going to take the loss and be left hanging the bag. But we'll see enough people swan diving off of buildings when it don't go their way. But you can't see that. Come on. Thank you, Bella. She says, Kim saying all facts. Come on. Um, T says, my son is taking two trades, one for enjoyment and the other for career. Come on. Um, what is XRP? Girl, don't even get me started on that. <laughs> X, XRP is a payment processing um, for um, in for larger payments. I'm talking about for trillions and gazillions, literally, I'm not playing, for trillions and gazillions of dollars that can be paid out in a matter of seconds. And it's through Ripple. So every currency, every dollar, every transaction, you know how sometimes it takes days for you, like if you deposit a check, it takes so many days or whatever. Ripple bypasses all of that. So it's a, it, is it considered a blockchain y'all? Is, or is it, is that considered blockchain? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Stacy said Kim is the XRP queen. <laughs> I'm tired of telling people to get XRP. I'm over it. it Come on, that's it. It takes place of SWIFT. We're currently on a SWIFT system that is very archaic. And a lot of money, this is one reason why our U.S. government loves sending money to Ukraine, because they can steal it in the transaction. A lot of money is stolen through the transaction. So if we send Ukraine $80 billion, they'll probably only get $60 billion of it, because a lot of it is stolen through the process of the transaction, of the electronic transaction. The SWIFT system is old. It allows for interna international payments, for payment systems to talk to each other. You have to see a visual to understand it if you've never seen it before. Come on, you're better off taking your Bitcoin and cashing out. That's what the that's what the billionaires are doing. While they pump it, while they pump it and they get all the all the, all the Bitcoin bro bros and all the people that's ecstatic about it. But I think this would be the year that Bitcoin dies. This or 2025 when it dies. Um, remember, I forget that economist. I know um Peter Schiff hates it. <laughs> Peter Schiff, um, he's I think he does Austrian um economics. And I, there was another financial analysis, and I forget his name. They said it's gonna go down to zero. Imagine being at 62. Oh, shoot, 62, 500 right now, right? 62.5, and it this drops down to zero. Y'all, y'all, mm -mm. okay. I think it is. I got my XRP with my external. Yep, get it on your external wallets, y'all. Get it on your external wallets. Buy you an external wallet directly. Don't ever buy one off of Amazon. Always buy it straight from the um from the manufacturer of the the bit the company that you go with. Yeah, use Uphold. If you're going to start off, you might want to use Uphold. I use Uphold. And I just, I don't bother it. I don't bother it. Come on, when Jim Cramer supports it, I'm running away. He supports it now. 
because he's part of the rug pull. He is, he's the person that people are going to listen to and they're going to go and they're going to put, y'all have to understand there was people who's putting, taking equity out of their house to go buy Bitcoin. I, I promise you there's people doing that right now. There's people taking their life savings and they're putting it into Bitcoin. This is the Great Depression all over. You just, it's just, more, it's more makeup. It's really pretty. You can't see it, but it's right before us. And I, one thing, y'all know, I love to study the Great Depression. Y'all have no idea. It's a doggy dog time. This is the time. Remember, I couldn't understand why I felt like the Holy Spirit was saying, don't spend no money. Don't really spend any money in, in um, um, March. Watch, watch your dollars, y'all. Be mindful of your money. Be mindful what you're investing, what you're spending. Even with right now, um, I think I'm going to go to the auction. I got an auction coming up this month. Um, I think I'm going to do the one in Macon. And I'm, I'm going to see what's on the chopping block. Even I, I mean, they got thousands on the chopping block, but I'm going to see what's going on. But I keep hearing that it, after April, it's a go. But just observe right now. Absorb, absorb, how you say? Observe and report. Come on. And besides the XRP, get gold and silver too. Absolutely. And let me tell y'all something. And let me tell you why they're pumping um, um, Bitcoin right now as well. Gold has um, actual value, right? It's malleable. Um, it has intrinsic value. And that's what you want to look at. Um, it will always be used. It's in everything. It's in your cell phones, in your microwave, it's in your car. Gold is in everything, okay? It, it, we need these metals. Silver is really good for exchanging of currency, right? So if you have to buy something and you need silver, you can shave gold, you can shave silver. Now, and y'all know I buy um, silver bars all the time. I'm really big on the, you know, one ounce, two ounce um, silver coins or bars. Um, they are buying gold on a low low. Let's look at what gold is. So look at, this is Bitcoin, who's this imaginary <laughs> whatever, right? I'm going to say, let's look at gold. They're buying up gold, but you would never know it. But they keep suppressing gold intentionally. So gold is sitting at 2,091. This is, but it holds value. But it's artificially being, this is very artificial because gold should be at 20,000, 30,000. Gold is very valuable. But they keep suppressing the value. Why? Because they want to buy it for cheap. The wealthy don't want to have to spend twenty thousand dollars what is that noise what is that oh it's my oh i know what it is okay um they want to buy it for cheap so while they're acting like they're buying up bitcoin they're really over here buying up gold but they allow the gold to stay suppressed gold is massively suppressed y'all oh that no wait wait that was in no let me see what is it today yeah that's okay so look at this Gold at two, gold should not be from one year to now is crazy. Gold should not have been suppressed this long. Am I looking at the right one? I ain't. There we go. That was today. So if we look at the five year climb, you have from gold was at twelve hundred, which that was in twenty nineteen. At one of its peak, it was at twenty twenty eight, and then today it's at twenty forty nine. No, that was February 23rd. Today's at 2091. This is crazy. But again, remember in the Great Depression, just after they had people turning their gold. And we're going back to a, a gold back currency. I know that for a fact. I know we're going to go back. That is what that will stop inflation. That will stop the recessions and the and all these different things. I'm telling you. And people know that our dollar is not backed by anything. Mm -mm. yeah it still work my email is depend i got a few of them but they they work i try to keep up with them <laughs> where um you can go to sd bullion that's a good place to start if you go to sd bullion for your gold and silver um set up an account with them there's a few that i use but this is SD bullion. Okay. And you can buy different gold coins, silver coins, coins and bars over there. I don't know how much it is over spot right now. Um, silver. It's, oh, that's pretty good. Silver is um, 
at 2306, 2331. And you can determine um, later. You can determine which kind, if you want gold eagles. I don't go too fancy. I keep it simple. Don't do, you don't want the junk silver. Um, here's the two ounce rounds. Now those are a little bit more pricey. Um, but you silver coins. I have a bunch of um her US mint that um, you can pick the designs that you want. Um, one of my favorite people, if you want to get educated on this, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite people. Oh man, TLA is still going. I don't know if she um he's supposed to make a decision on the fanny case. Um, but you want to do hold on, let's see. What's the name of them? Oh, Yankee Stacker. Yankee. Yankee Stacking right here. I love his channel. He does, um, he talks, um, I think his name is Bill. He does a lot of education on um, silver stacking, and I think you'll really enjoy it. Okay. Mm, let me see. No, do the CEO. Just our Chapman. Do CEO. Do CEO drive her at Gmail. Do CEO drive her at Gmail. Literally, my name at Gmail. All right, y'all. I'm gonna call it out. I didn't want. I didn't want to. It's Friday. It's the Sabbath. Um, I just wanted to kind of. Throw that out there with the gig workers, what's going on with that. For my gig workers, get your house in order. Get your house in order. Um, you're going to go and log on to your app one day, and you ain't going to be able to get into none of them, okay? Be careful. Be careful. Um, go ahead and get your money now. Stack up. Have about three months, six months of um, uh, finances, right? Make sure you have that in, in place. It's just going to be really up and down, and you don't want to be working for pennies. OK, you don't know what's going to happen with fuel, um, how prices are going to shift and fluctuate and all. And they're going to have all these excuses. You want to be in a position where you have an out, basically. OK. All right. So, OK, y'all, it was good talking to you. Be safe this weekend. I'll see a bunch of you all in print to publish. Um, I, I think I have two classes. I have to send you the replays. So I got a lot to do this weekend. My goodness. <sighs> um, I'll do that with the um so a uh, little uh, class overview and all that stuff um i haven't decided if i'm gonna sell the replay or not but um i'll have that for you okay all right make sure you like as you exit out y'all go ahead and hit the like button please go ahead and hit the like so people can catch this replay um i hope you all was able to eat the meat spit out the bones that you enjoyed this and um i'll have some more uh for you Okay, we're coming in the spring. I'm I'm doing a lot more scouting now that um the spring is coming in, and I'm gonna um showcase some new land territories for a lot of you all, and um have some commentary uh, on that. Um, remember, I'm just focusing on Mid Georgia. I am gonna do some explorations in Alabama, and I'm look. I may do some in Florida as well. So I'm gonna be covering the entire South as much as possible um, with these scouting journeys and looking at some of these lands and the and the landscape and what have you. Um, so you all can buy this pro these properties because it's going to be a massive sale, a massive sale come spring and summer um, with these tax deeds. OK, so we want to do that and make sure you get your scout and save. You can get the physical copy or you can get the digital property copy on my website at CEO Drive Her dot shop or CEO Drive Her LLC dot com. Again, CEO Drive Her LLC dot com. All right. Be safe. Love you much. Bye bye.